this um, discussion we're going to have today is really going to uh, take you guys on a journey across both east and west, and it's going to engage your brains a little bit. So I think, as Rudy said, hopefully it'll help our functioning and exercise our brains. But we're going to go across two different worlds, the worlds of engineering systems in the modern world, but we're also going to learn about Ayurveda and Siddha. So let me start here. Um, slides, please. This way? OK. So let me go back here. The title of the talk that we're going to, let me start here, is Rosetta Stone of Ayurveda and Siddha. How many people have heard of Ayurveda and Siddha? Anyone? OK, good. So those two um, systems of Indian medicine have been practiced for around 5,000 years. Ayurveda typically in northern India and Siddha in southern India. And for most of my life, I've been very, very interested in understanding the foundations of these systems of medicine. Deepak really introduced um, that uh, medicine form, Ayurveda, to the United States. But there's always been this interesting dialectic. Does Ayurveda and Siddha really have a scientific foundation? And if you look along Wikipedia, and there's a lot of debates arguing that these systems have no scientific basis. But the good news is what I want to share with you is we just published a major paper in a systems journal scientifically validating the foundations of these systems of medicine. So that's what I'm going to share with you today. Um, in the Ayurveda and Siddha system, the idea is to understand a holistic understanding of the body. Unfortunately, when Western science has explored this, we take this reductionist approach, right? You try to understand the whole by looking at the parts. So there's a fundamental problem with this entire approach. And um, so as I thought about this, there is a part of, in Western science, called control systems engineering, which really can serve as a Rosetta Stone. Everyone knows what the Rosetta Stone is? Yes, it was a piece of stone that was found that really bridged the ancient world of Egyptian language through, Greek, to, through Greece. And it opened up a whole understanding of the Egyptian world. So as I was looking at this, I said, is there a different way that we can approach the understanding of Ayurveda and Siddha using stuff that are irrefutable in, mo in the modern world? So you're going to learn about, there's three words here. Some of you may have heard about this. It's called control systems engineering. Now, control, control systems engineering principles are the foundations of pretty much everything, every technology, the iPhone, the thermostat, aircraft, anything that has been developed in the last 60 years is based on these principles. So as I take you through this, I want to make this discussion somewhat friendly so it doesn't get too technical. So I'm going to take you on a personal journey, which will show you where I've come from, from these worlds of East and West. And in that journey, I'm going to share with you Ayurveda and control systems theory. So I grew up in Bombay, India. But in India, I grew up in two worlds, in this very uh, intense city. But I also grew up in, uh, in a very rural, rural place, a, a village in India. And my grandmother was actually a village farmer. She worked 16-hour days in the fields. There's actually a picture of a very intense-looking woman. But she was a trained shaman and a siddhar. She could look at your face, observe lines and characteristics of your face, and she could predict different aspects of body dysfunction. And then she gave you, as we talked about, I think, in the earlier discussion, personalized medicine. So Siddha and Ayurveda were fundamentally personalized medicine in the sense that not everyone got the same treatment. So when I came to the United States, and by the way, this is one of these Siddha yogis. And just to um, step back a little bit, if you can hold on, I'm going to walk you through the terminology or the lingua franca of Siddha and Ayurveda. So if you took, I know, Deepak, you do a course in the Chopra Center where you can actually take an intensive in Ayurveda, but you're going to learn it in the next one minute. At least you'll learn the words. So in the Ayurveda and Siddha system, there is this concept of uh, unmanifest energy, which means before anything got created, there was a void, which is called Purusha. Purusha gave rise to another concept called Prakriti, which is all the gross manifest things that you see around, you, around us. Um, and that was essentially translated into three forms, the gunas, which were sattva, rajas, and th tamas. By the way, don't worry about understanding the concepts. I just want you to get a feel of that there is this whole terminology. That, uh, that energies gave rise to what are called the five elements, panchabhutas, which are, some of you may know, fire, water, earth, metal, etc. And those um, uh, 
matter gave rise in the Indian system to a combination of those uh, material forms which gave rise to what is known as vatha to describe a certain aspect of your body. The best way to think about vatha is this. You know, it's a, a, a dancer moving through the air. It really represents motion, okay? Another aspect of these tridoshas was pitta. And that is best looked at the aspects of transformation or conversion that you can think about, in this case, molten uh, or iron being converted to molten iron. And the last aspect of uh, the tridoshas was this thing called kapha, which is best exemplified in structure or storage, in, the, in this case of the skeleton. So those are the terminologies of Ayurveda, and the, and, and the tridoshas gave rise to what are called the datus, or the tissues, and they manifest in different forms, which got, uh, gave rise to the whole body, okay? So if you took an Ayurveda course, this is sort of the summary of the Ayurveda or Siddha Pantheon. If you looked at these words, it's probably very, very hard to understand what these mean, and if a Westerner looked at it, it's ha even harder for them to uh, give any scientific credence to it. So let me switch gears a little bit. When I uh, came to the United States, I was very interested in really finding the meaning of this. As uh, Jay said, I came to the United States in 1970, went to a medical school, and I thought I, w I would have the opportunity to do medicine. Uh, I was very interested in doing research on sleep, and um, ended up the, the uh, supervisor there, this was when I was 14, told me to actually do something more interesting. He actually had me build, if you can see, these are the elements of the inner office mail system. Everyone remembers this, right? The memo, inbox, outbox, folders. This was what the office had, but it was a complex system. These were these pneumatic tubes where they would send out the paper mail. And that was what I created, and I called it email. And, but the important thing was, this is actually the copyright for email from August 30th, but the important thing was what I learned was about systems, because email was actually a system. And that came to, when I came to MIT, finished a bunch of degrees, but as we discussed in the first talks last year, there's this whole new field developing called systems biology around 2003. Systems biology is a West's way of trying to understand a holistic understanding of the body, bottoms up, protein, molecules, building a whole idea of the human physiome. And when you look at this field, um, I know there were other diagrams we saw in the earlier talks. You could think about the pyramid like this. You're going from understanding of molecules and genes all the way to the understanding of the whole structure. So the interest here is, can you look at the left side of the diagram, which is the way the West is starting to look at the human physiome, and the right side of the diagram? Okay, can we bridge these worlds? So in 2007, I was given a Fulbright to go back to India, and in that process, I think... Uh, what I'm going to share with you is we discovered that connection. Just a little brief thing. I've used the word systems here, but what are systems? Well, that's a system. Everyone see that? That's a watch, an interconnection of a bunch of parts. That's also a system. That's a space shuttle. That's a system, which is a city. These are all very, very complex systems. The cell is a system. You know, this robot's a system. Now, the important thing is, do all of these systems share certain fundamental principles? Are there certain principles that span them? And a simple way of understanding these principles is to look at this, the act of this cook here making something. And I'm gonna share with you the core principles of control systems engineering. So first principle is transport. Transport's the principle is actually moving, the stirring, the, move, the motion process. All things in nature have this aspect of transport. Every system in the universe has this. Another aspect is conversion. When you look at this, there's a heat that's actually doing the conversion process. The third aspect is storage. The vessel there is actually performing the storage under which this reaction can take place. And then there's two other aspects of basic systems, the input, you know, what you put in, all the food and all the vegetables, substances, and then the output, which is what you want. Okay, so if you want to look at it from a systems diagram, you would actually see this diagram, which is input, output, transport, conversion and storage. Everyone with me? Okay. So now we, it, it, it gets a little more interesting. That's a basic system. Now let's talk about an intelligent system. An intelligent system has a couple of other aspects. You see the cook actually has an intention in his mind, a goal. He wants to make a bowl of soup, which hopefully tastes good. He, ha he is a controller of this system in the sense he's the one who's assessing 
is it coming along well? Does it taste good? He may be manipulating it. So he's sort of the brains behind this. And then he's got sensors. He may taste it. He may smell it. He may, he may do a set of things to it. And when you put this together, this is what you would learn in a 13-week course at MIT in control systems theory. You basically have a set of a feedback system where, the, where you have a goal, you have the output, you measure the output with your sensors, the controller makes an assessment, and then it manipulates the input, and you keep doing this until you get what you want. Is this clear? Okay. So uh, that's called control systems engineering, by the way. And these are the terms that are used in this field. And a simple, couple of examples are, this is your home thermostat. The, the, the reason you have nice heat or nice cooling in your home is because of the thermostat. And if you look at this, um, you can see all those elements. And you, you want 78 degrees. There's the output. There's the input into the, which is a hot water that goes into your heating system, which stores the heat. There's a controller. Um, and then there's the actual uh, temperature that you get. Okay. Now, these systems, and by the way, you have a goal, and you're constantly modulating around that goal until you get what you want. And that's the, that's the foundations of an intelligent system. Um, another example, which some of you may use, is a cruise control system. But something that we all rely on, particularly on modern aircraft, is the autopilot. All right, so what I just covered was control systems engineering. Now, if we go back to this terminology, and the point that we're going to come to is that the Siddhas and the Ayurvedic sages who came up with this, they actually had a fundamental way of looking at the world. As someone else said, the goal you know, in the next discoveries that are going to come is to come from tools. They actually developed a tool to actually understand the body. So everyone's heard of the word karma, right? Yes? The word is used in many, many different ways. But if you actually look at it, it actually means action. It's actually input. It's what are the things that you do if you have a goal, it could be running, exercising, etc. When you take on an action, your body actually changes its behavior. The vatha, pitta, kapha elements change, and those are the forces of transport, the forces of conversion, and the forces of structure or storage. The output of your action, some of you may have heard this word called karma fall, which is the fruits of karma, Okay, the results of your action. So another way of looking at this is this diagram, which looks oddly similar, right, to a control systems diagram. In the yogic tradition, the yo there's a couple of other ter terms that are actually used. In the yoga tradition, a sankalpa is an intention or a goal that you set. It could be a goal to achieve enlightenment, a goal to make a certain amount of money, a goal to achieve health. It's a very particular term that's used. Another term that's in the Ayurvedic system is the indriyas, which are your senses, the sensors that you use to assess are you heading toward a particular goal that you've set yourself uh, uh, for? The manas are really your mind, your, the, the decisions that you make in life. At the end of the day, when you put this together, you get a very similar diagram. Okay, so sankalpa is a goal that you're setting. Karma fall is the fruits of your action. The indriyas are your senses. This is why meditation becomes a very important aspect of life, because what are indriyas? The, the meditation is really enhancing your awareness, which is enhancing your senses. The better your senses are, the better your mind can achieve the goal that you want. But you notice the transport conversion elements are in here. So uh, as I end this talk, what we did was, when we wanted to get this out, we didn't want to go publish in the traditional medical journals because they're still taking a reductionist approach. So we went to the systems engineering journals. So this has just come out. Um, it's in, it was except for publication, will come out next month. But it's an important paper because it ends a bunch of important um, uh, discussions that have been taking place. But what you see is you see a one-to-one -one connection between the terms that are used in modern control systems engineering and the terms that were developed 5,000 years ago. So that's the Rosetta Stone. So the key takeaways are that you know modern civilization is founded on modern control systems engineering. The sages of India had developed these principles 5,000 years ago. And the other part of it is that Ayurveda and Siddha are founded on these principles. So I think much of this discussion about whether Ayurveda and Siddha are snake oil or they do not have scientific integrity, uh, this paper should put to rest at this point. So that's it. And by the way, it's the anniversary of email. That's me with the Prime Minister of India this year. And we have a book out there. 
And that's me when I was 14. Thank you. Thank you. So, thanks, Shiva. So at, at the Chopra Center, uh, twice a year, we teach a course called Journey into Healing. And initially, it was offered only to physicians, but no physicians took it. So we started offering it to everybody else, you know, everybody else who was in the health field. And then we had um, uh, the American Medical Association come and monitor some of these courses. And they were impressed enough that uh, they started giving CME credit to the people who took CME, continuing medical education credit. So physicians need about uh, 100 hours of CME credit to get their license renewed. So the AMA very kindly gave us uh, 25 hours of CME credit for these courses. And gradually, the physicians started to come, probably because it's a nice place. And you know you can have a nice uh, uh, holiday here, play golf, which physicians do a lot, and get 25 hours of credit. But what was lacking was a good scientific vocabulary uh, that could explain what we were doing in terms of systems biology. And getting this paper published in a systems journal uh, is a major milestone for us. So I want to thank Shiva. Thank you. All I got to say is keep up the innovation stuff because, you know, even though you were 14, I'm, all these 14 and 17 year olds that are doing something, you know, it depresses me. And so you and I are about the same age now. <laughs> And so I just need you to do something as cosmic as email now. We are. It's called Cytosol. Great. great. That'll be next okay. for another discussion. <laughs> Good. Uh, Thank yeah, you. actually, I should comment. He mentioned Cytosol, which is a new startup uh, that uh, he started, which basically takes computer science to test drugs, to test treatments mm -hmm. through algorithms. So you ultimately bypass animal testing and even in vitro testing. That's one of Shiva's. Project Zone.